Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a great video for you today. I got Matt Cox. We're gonna do a question and answer with Matt and we're gonna bring Matt back and he's gonna be on a podcast so you can get the full version on the podcast. What a great guy, interesting story, really fun. Matt, welcome. Thank you. You know, you, 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 you know you're just a very interesting guy, smart, obviously. Did your time, though. And people say, oh yes, you did your time. What was your crime that you got arrested for? Uh, Bank fraud, money laundering, wire fraud, conspiracy to commit bank fraud, passport fraud, um, social security fraud, and aggravated identity theft. When, when you get, usually they charge you with the boatload, which they yeah. did. Did they actually convict you on it, or did you have, like, no. they, some of them they take away? Uh, they, they dropped the money laundering, everything else they convict, uh, everything else I pled guilty to. I mean, was Mail fraud, obviously, the big one, right? Uh, well, wire fraud, I got wire fraud, not, not, it, bank fraud holds 30 years, so. Wow. Yeah. So, and you knew that going in? No, I didn't have any idea what I was doing going yeah. in. I didn't think I was going to get in trouble. I didn't think, you know, just cocky arrogance. Just You know, but, but you have a cocky act, like, kind of, it, it's, it's not offensive. It's like, you know, I love it. I think it's, it, 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 it oozes confidence. And in today's world, you do need it. I don't give a fuck what you do. You yeah. need it. And that's, that's what people don't get. Uh, who are the people you scam? Um, I mean, so I've got, like... 54, 55 victims, but there's only four individuals. The rest were financial institutions. So it's everybody. It's Countrywide, Bank of America, which... The big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wells Fargo, um, you know, uh, um, Washington Mutual, you know, a ton, of, a ton of big banks. You know, I noticed I didn't get into this on a podcast. You had a, almost a $6 million restitution. Yeah, it was, yeah. Who is that to? See, that kind of like gets me pissed when it's institutions who wrote it off already. Or, or don't even exist anymore. It was supposed to be like, so when I got sentenced, they changed it. Where it was a blanket, they came back with 9.5. And then I argued, who do I owe that to? So we argued back and forth and they got it to $6 million. But the truth is, they have a list of people and if you add it all up, the bulk of it is to banks, but half those banks went under during the, fi the uh, financial crisis of 2008. So I just pay my check to the for my restitution to the government. I don't know who they're giving it to. Uh, the the individuals you 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 a scam like I right. did the same thing. And most of the insurance companies with mine were uh, who got hurt. Right. But there was always this you know personal you rob something it's private yeah. or whatever. Who were those and how did that happen? So it, it's funny because it's like you know people will say like oh you're a con man you stole from people but I actually never took any money from anybody. What happened was I might rent your house satisfy the loan on your house, then I'm, I could pretend to be you. I would you know, create a false identity or transfer the mortgage, the, the title in your house into a, a false, like a satisfaction, like a, um, sorry, like a synthetic identity and then borrow against the house. Now here's the problem. I didn't steal from you. The problem is, is that then when I take off with a million dollars, now it's up to you to figure out how to fix the situation that I caused. So these people would go out and hire an attorney for $6,000, $8,000. If you combine all four victims, I owe a total of roughly $30,000. But I didn't take the money from them. They just went and got an attorney. So you, know, you could say, oh, well, I didn't steal from them. But I still cause them a, a huge financial hardship. Um, yeah, you're and, not making light of it. But no, no, I'm not trying. I'm saying like I didn't steal directly from them, but I certainly caused them to, to go out and spend money. Would that like identity theft? Companies that charge that stuff, uh, you know, so clear your stuff. Would have they cleared it for these people? Yeah, they would have. Yeah, like um, they definitely. What they call it? I forget that one company. Had, uh, um, like I, I'm actually a spokesperson for Home Title Lock. I, I do commercials for them and infomercials for them, and uh, they would have fixed all that. They would have. Pay, they would have actually hired a local attorney, a local lawyer, real estate attorney, to correct all of those problems, and that would have probably cost them a dollar a month. You know, as a consumer myself and, you know, as a home person, you hear all these things about, oh, they could steal your loan and just get a loan and you lose everything. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what advice would you give a person to protect himself? Um, it's going to sound like a, a paid spot or something. LifeLock? Like but I mean, yeah, it would be. No, well, so LifeLock does. LifeLock does um, identities, but if you were worried about your home, it would be Home Title Lock. And there's other companies out there, but I, what I like about Home Title Lock is it's the largest one, and they'll 
they'll make you whole. They'll hire somebody, a lawyer, to fight the case until they make you whole because there are actual people, not in my case, but there are times when the bank has foreclosed on a house that was a part of a title theft and the people lose the house. Like you don't have the money to go. Most people don't have the money to go out and hire an attorney for ten or $20,000 to fight this. They can't do it themselves. They're not lawyers. Some guy that works at, as a manager at Walmart, he doesn't know how to fix the, the, the situation that I've caused for him. And he would, they would actually lose their house? Oh yeah, the bank, the bank doesn't give a crap. They'll take your shit, they, they don't care. They're like, you're Even if they know it's a fraud, they don't care, they just want their money. I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna make every attempt to get a hold of that. They're not just gonna take the, take the loss. Now, maybe if the Secret, Secret Service or FBI comes in and says, no, no, what are you doing? But for the most part, they'd need, they'd need a, a significant amount of paperwork to prove they had nothing to do with it. Or what if I did it in your name? You're the homeowner and I used your name to borrow the money and then borrowed against the house. How do you convince the bank that wasn't me? Well, it was your name, your house, your social. Your social but don't they have to have a signature? That doesn't mean anything. Okay. Like, no, but who's, who's going to compare it? And who cares? They're like, so you squiggle. I don't know. Things. I'm always thinking different. I mean, the ways to try to do something. And I get it. I, I'm kind of cautious myself, but you really hear about these things and they get crazy. Yeah. So you started a mortgage company when you were young, or you worked for a mortgage company. I worked for a mortgage company, and then I started one very quickly, within six months to a year. And how, what made you think of doing that? I mean, your own was legit at first, right? Your mortgage company was legit? It was always kind of, there was always, you know, what's legit? Like, there was always some shenanigans going on. You know? <laughs> I mean, listen, you did what you did, and you own up to it. Obviously, you were a perfect candidate to help prevent something like that, actually. Yeah, I, mean, I do that with jewelry robberies, yeah. and I do that on TV with, uh, uh, per, you know, loss prevention, so to speak. You know, how to s secure your home, you yeah. know, with, uh, I've done a lot of those. Yeah, I talk in front of the... Uh, Financial Crimes Division at, uh, for the Sheriff's Department. I talk in front of um, cyber, uh, cyber security. I do um, mortgage conventions. I do all that. Wow, good. Uh, I'm gonna look for you on the circuit. Well, people, we're gonna put a link in this video below to get how you could get hold of Matt uh, in what he does. Okay, you, you went from I, you know, mortgage frauds, of course, and with that came identity theft. With that came social security guards getting a social security right. guard. I remember during a podcast, you said something like, I got a lot of kids, you know, because right. you made social security numbers. Right. You went elaborately on how you did it, but was this just all trial and error? Did you hear somebody do it once? Did you it's, know, or was it total trial and error? It's funny you say that, because most people don't ever ask that. So the, it, it actually was a woman had come in my mortgage company, when I owned the mortgage company, and she applied for a loan, and she had perfect credit, great credit, but it was all new, within a year or two, but like 750 credit scores. And I got her W-2 and her social security number is different on her W-2 and pay stub than it was on the number she gave me and I pulled. So I asked her about it and she was, she was scared, but then she was like, I was like, look, I just want to know what you did. Like, I'm going to make sure you get the loan. You got perfect credit. You got a job. You got perfect credit. It's going to, I just need to know. And she explained to me that she'd been gotten divorced five or six years earlier. And one of her friends, she couldn't get her electric turned on or get an apartment, one of her friends suggested she use her maiden name and her kid's name because her in her married name, she had horrible credit. So she used a different address, her kid, who was like four years, five years old, social security number and her maiden name, which she hadn't used in 10 years. And sure enough, it had, it, it, she got an apartment, then she started getting credit card offers, she took the credit card offers, she knew it had to, had to be using that, that her kid's social social security number. And so she filled it out, got one of the cards, got another card, got a car loan from Ford a year later. And she said, I've just been making the payments ever since. And I thought maybe I'd try and get a mortgage. Does she end up rooting her child's social security? Uh, or, or, or I don't know what happened. Yeah, I'm just you know? wondering how that would work. Like you would think eventually she would just switch it over to the old one or her child would have an, an issue. Because after seven years, you know, you have no credit. Like. I, when I got out of prison, that's I, how I, I got absolutely. Out. You know, yeah, I got. God, out. They said what they called us a ghost. Right. Yeah. yeah. You don't need that. There's nothing there. Well, yeah. I got out of prison. I went immediately when I was in the halfway house. Got three secured credit cards, made all the payments, and when I walked out of the halfway house, I had 754 credit scores. <laughs> how did you make a identity disappear? Like you take out an identity, you just get. Do you just forget about it, drop it, or is there a way you close it so that maybe there's no way it can come back to you at all? Well, I mean, I went, you know, it's 
it, I, like I from the very beginning, if you know, I'm not. You know, you're not gonna. You're this is a scam. Then you started off as a scam from the beginning. So all of those credit cards go to a drop house. A PO box. PO, or, right. Well, you can't get into a PO box. You can't ultimately, but you, you need some a, an abandoned house or a friend of a friend or you know maybe a. a uh, a UPS box or whatever you get those cards mailed there and then you start you take them and maybe you can move the uh, the billing to a, a PO box or something close that out you know and and so you make the payments and then you you know you get a, a prepaid phone or a, you know a, a burner phone and you use that burner phone you use you maybe make a fake uh, um, Website for your employer, fake pay stubs, fake everything, all fake because you know at some point I'm going to close this down. When people come looking, I want them to go to this abandoned house. I want them to look for this phone number, which is registered in the same name, you know, using the same, so that goes nowhere. The, all the addresses go to this house. All the phone numbers go to phone number, other phone numbers. So they just end up, fought, you know, fought, they're all blind alleys. They just don't go anywhere. It's almost like a VPN. Right. You know, it goes from one to another, another, before right. they, they lose track of yeah, it. Yeah, it's too late. Yeah, it's just too much. You know, I was just thinking, sitting here, I says, you know, I know my phone number. Did you ever really know your phone number? I mean, um, you, you must have changed phone numbers often. You, you know what's so funny? I, there was a, at one point, like, people have asked me that. Uh, like, how did you keep all of that straight? But usually when I went into a bank or something, I was going in as, when I did a scam, I did a scam as one person. So I might have 10 identities, but I'm running this scam as this person and I'm going in with that information. And I've been in situations before where they would, where somebody would say, what's your social security number? I'm like, I don't, you know what? I don't even know. Pull it out, read it to them. Or they would say, uh, what's your date of birth? And I think, fuck. And I go, you know what? That's an excellent question. Hold on a second. And I pull out like, just act silly and foolish and go, oh, there it is. It's July 7th, 19 so you didn't have to remember. You didn't have to be a. a I did a lot, but if there was an issue, I just, I just said, you know, that's an excellent question. Let me check. You, you and they just the say, yeah. yeah, you're some, you're some cashier, and they, oh, he's so he's just being silly. No, it I, doesn't I hurt. You're a good-looking guy. You probably played to that. You know, played to that strength. No, I mean that's no. not even to be a funny question. Right. It's you know that's a way women do it. I mean, obviously, yeah, flirt. So, you're flirtatious. Yeah. You're nice. You're sure. And I, I don't. I'm very unassuming. I don't look threatening. I'm a clean-cut way. You I know. Like, like during the podcast, you're like Larry looks threatening. Or right? <laughs> did any of your identities get caught before you you were ready for them to get caught? Like or found out? Um, yeah, there, there were like, there were times when like banks would catch me and they, they catch the person who, who the person, they know it was a fake person and they would, you know, but then one of the things that they tend, tended to do is because most people don't think fraud. The first thing they do is they start making phone calls, trying to figure out like, are we wrong? And of course, if, if there's six phone numbers associated with this person, you're getting those phone numbers or other people that you know are getting those phone numbers. So they're calling you saying, yo, just got a phone call from bb and Bank. This is what they're asking. You're like, oh wow. You know, and then you either jump everything and walk away or maybe you call bb and Bank and say, hey, what's going on? This is so-and-so. Try to clear it right, up. Try and clear way. it up. Or, when you had the fake IDs, you put them on life support. What does that actually mean? So it, when I was closing out, like sometimes if somebody caught it before, two, before I was ready to close it out, it was one thing. But if if I knew the scam was over, like I've got six mortgages in this guy's name, I got five credit cards, I got two personal loans, and his credit scores are dropping because I've maxed out everything he's got. Well, then it's time to walk, I would be time to walk away from the scam, and what I would do is, I, you know, I'd stop paying, and then once the collection company started writing letters, I would take an article from the newspaper for like a 12 car pile up on I-75 or something, and I'd retype it, and I'd put, my synthetic identity's name in the article as someone that was life flighted to, let's say, Tampa General Hospital, was currently in critical condition. So I retype it, put his name in, print it out on newsprint, cut it up like it had been cut out of the newspaper, because this is 15 years ago, 16 years ago. And then I'd write a letter from that synthetic identity's sister, you know, and say, hi, my brother was in, a, in an accident, please see enclosed newspaper article, He's currently on life support. The doctors say even if he can, uh, even if he recovers, he'll never work again. So you might as well just take the house. I'm so sorry about this. You know, God bless, whatever. Yeah. And you send it off, and and that gave the collection companies 
a reason to stop looking. Like, they have an answer. We don't need to find this guy. There's no money. We know where he is. He's in intensive care. It's done. Foreclose on it. Take the house. But you're never worried about them coming to look for you, right? I, I mean, you look for the police to look for you, not for a identity. I mean, not for a credit score company, trans, whatever they are. No, no, but, but, but if it's a foreclosure, they will sometimes want to serve you. So now they're looking, like they're showing up knocking on doors. Like I would have tenants in some of these houses, right? So I got a tenant. You go to pick up the rent one day and they go, yo, man, there was a guy who came by looking for you. And you're like, oh, wow. Like it doesn't matter. I don't want, I don't want anybody from Bank of America seeing me, even if it's to serve me or anything. I don't want to, I don't want them seeing me at that point. Out of all the names, I know you probably don't remember them, of course. Uh, when you got a name, is there any one that sticks out? And what was the biggest one, one scam? It kind of sounds like you did a lot of little scams. They ended right. up, of course, each one, because each one's its own scam, we were saying. Right. You know, fraud or whatever it is. Yeah, so one, so what was I, the biggest one you did? So the biggest one, I got the most money. And so the synthetic identities that I did in Tampa and um, Nashville, Tennessee, I, you know, they would maybe be a million, a million, but... I would say the one where I, it was a scam from the very beginning. I mean, it was a scam and it was going to be quick, in and out, get the money and leave. I would say it was a guy named Gary Sullivan. I borrowed $1.3 million in the name Gary Sullivan. He was a homeless guy I met in Las Vegas. Now you get that money. Now, was that for the cash because you had to get out? Yeah, you got, yeah. It was one point, it was, that was a $1.3 million lick where I'm going to get $1.3 million and leave. Like if, if, you, if you were a synthetic identity and you borrowed $1.1 million, that doesn't mean I'm getting 1.1 $1. $1 million. Some of those scams I might get 600, 700 thousand, but this guy was getting 1.3 million. So right. it's, it's, a, it's a nice lick at one time. Obvious cash too. Right. Uh, yeah, there's no Bitcoin. Yeah. Can you imagine now? Yeah. Like I, oh, I, I, I thought I, about that once. Yeah, I watch these programs where they say like, oh, like they buy your house. You know, where they just send a drive by an appraiser to drive by your house and look at it. And they give you an offer. Man, I, I looked at the, I would, I'd be in prison watching those going, man. <laughs> How easy it would have been. Uh, what got you caught up in this game? Was it just the greed? Or was, it a, was it like an American greed thing? Listen, I'm not going to work. I'm going to scam them. I know how to do it. Or, or was it like you got yourself in debt and then you said, I got to get out of it. Here's a quick away. So the problem with that question is I used to say, oh, well, I needed money. And that's easy to say, but then you get... 200,000 and then you go, oh, uh, uh, you know, if I have 400,000 and then you get 400,000 then it's 600, then it's 800. And the fact is you don't really need the money. Right. Same so, as myself. So the problem, I, I, you know, and looking back after I wrote a memoir, right? So, and you, you learn a lot writing about yourself, especially reading what other people have said about you. So what I've come to the conclusion of is that basically like I, there was, I had plenty of money, plenty of times is that, you know, my father, like I desperately wanted my dad to be proud of me. You know, this is a guy who never thought I was gonna be anything, had no problem letting me know that. And when I started that mortgage company, started making money, he was fucking proud. Like I would have done anything to keep that up. And then of course, when it all went down, well, now it's like, okay, well, it's just too fucking late. Now the cops are coming. So do I move into spare room and live off of my parents? Like he assumed I was always gonna do. You know, or do I say, you know, fuck it, I'm just, I'm just going to go on the run. And so I went on the run. Okay, since you went on the run, how long were you on the run? And first, when, how did you know that the FBI was after you? Uh, the first time I, the one, I knew it because a sheriff's deputy, when the whole thing was falling apart, a sheriff's deputy friend of mine stopped by and said, look, I used to date a girl or a, this woman who was a Tampa police officer. She was working on a task force about you and it was just handed to the FBI, they're gonna come arrest you. That's when I knew, like, holy oh, shit. Like, and how long were you on, a, on, on the land? Yeah, three say. years. Three years of, I guess, house to house to house. But it sounds like you actually were living as well. Like, yeah. you get a house, you go to the gym, you do things, you yeah. go to a Starbucks. So it wasn't like, you know, I know people who were on the land, they're literally ready to drop everything in a second and gone. No, I got two or three cars, I got two, three cars, nothing flashy. like. You know, you have like an Infinity or, you know, maybe a, a, a Nissan. Lexus. Yeah, whatever. Like, you know, there's seventy eight thousand dollars Like, I'm living in a, in a condo in Charlotte. I'm living as somebody. If I got pulled over, if the cops turn on the, you know, hit those, hit those sirens and pulled me over, I pull over. 
Like I've got a valid driver's license in the name of somebody else. Valid driver's license, I've got a passport in that name. I've, the car's registered in that name. It's, it's got full coverage insurance. Give me the ticket. Like, I'm not concerned. You know, if I want to go on vacation, I go on vacation. I got a passport, I can pay with my credit card, I've got, you know. Well, you were also wanted and there were posters by the Secret right. Service and everybody out there. So did, did that, like, literally, that would get me right. scared. You would think it would, right? But the arrogance of me, I just thought, they're not going to catch me. I'm too good. I'm too good. They're not going to catch me. You know, until they put cuffs on you and then you're like, wow. Yeah. That's, that's bad. I, I feel that feeling. Uh, a couple more. How did you deal with anxiety? I mean, I remember, you know, I, I was, I wonder if I was a psychopath sometimes. I, I had no, like, uh, I didn't, I, I was doing it. It was a job to me. It was like, okay, I'm doing it. I mean, I didn't have any anxiety. I could say, oh, yeah. oh, I'd get excited. I had adrenaline high, but I didn't have anxiety. Did you have any kind of like that? So people always, you know, oh, how'd you sleep at night? Like, I slept like a baby. Like, I, I and, and I, you know, I would say like, you know, it, Listen, 1% of society has uh, antisocial disorder, right? They're sociopathic, right? So, and, and, it's, and it's a scale. So am I on the sociopathic scale? Yeah, okay, of course, of course I am. I think I am too. Right? You couldn't do the things that I couldn't walk in, know I'm gonna cause you a problem, knowing I'm stealing from money that's not mine, and have no problem at all walk away. You gotta be, a, a portion of you has to be a sociopath. So. Uh, but as far as anxiety, like I had a prescription for Xanax and I might take that, but I, it wasn't because of what I was doing. It was more because I didn't like being in public and I never had like large groups of people make me uncomfortable, but I'm a little guy, you know, so I'm insecure anyway. So it's more for insecurity than it was because I was afraid I was going to get caught for committing crimes. It was just more insecurity. I mean, for, for a guy with insecurities, you really handled it pretty well. I mean, obviously, doing what you did, walking into banks, walking into meeting a banker for an hour, or doing whatever you have to do, mortgage brokers and stuff like that. So I give you that. And finally, you finally get caught. And you get caught in uh, 2000... 2000, late 2006. 2006, you get caught. Right. How did they exactly go down? How did the catching you go down? So... Um, my girlfriend had confided in a friend that I was wanted and I was leaving. I was taking off. I was going to go to Australia and we were pulling money out of the bank and that girl called the, so the secret service and negotiated a, uh, a reward to turn me in. They washed my house for a few days, called me one day and the po local police called me because I'd had like a burglary, called me and said, Hey, do you, you have the videotape? Can we meet you at your house? And I was like, sure, no problem. So I drove to the house. As soon as I pulled up, I got out of the car, and I mean the you know the 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 S black SUVs, you know, they pull up, and you know you're standing there going what? And I at first I thought I was getting robbed. I thought I'm getting robbed. It was a bad neighborhood. You know, I owned all the houses around me, but it was wasn't a great neighborhood. I was like I'm about to get robbed. Of course, then I could see the Secret Service on their chest, and they were all you know get on the ground, you know, like. You know, they come at you like it's like I'm not dangerous. Like I'm not. I'm not like God. I'm like what are you, you know, they put you on the ground. They hold you up. They brush you off. They go. And yeah, mine's a little different. They came through the patio, ninja suits, the whole work. So I mean, I. Yeah. I it is. It's, it's 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 that's, dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a dangerous guy. Yeah. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Anyway, Matt, I really want to thank you for coming on. You yeah, did. Got a great you. story. Thank Keep you. it. You know. Listen. I, I always hope people take their story. Do something with it. In one way or another, maybe someone will hear it and say, yeah, it ain't worth it. I mean, I hear that and run. I always try to say to people, listen, I did, I did a lot of bad things. Yeah. I'm not proud of them, but I, they are what they are. You can't regret life. You can't live life with the regret either. I hope that people forgive or not. I thought of people said, do you approach the people? I said, I don't want to put oil in their face. Like, you know, I think that's almost disrespectful. They had to deal with it. I hope they dealt with it. Most have. In fact, most of the people I robbed would not all of them wouldn't come to trial because they made money in insurance. Right. And even the FBI said, well, you know, you got a lot of money out of that one. I said, I didn't get that much of that. Obviously, they were doing their own stuff with insurance. But I hope uh, you get your message out there, keep it up with the you know, insurance company, who you work with. And thanks again. I hope to come on your show. I hope we do some more stuff. You're a good guy, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Oh. All right, everybody. You can find Matt at Inside Matt Cop, Matthew Cox on YouTube, Inside True Crime. Matthew Cox, Inside True Crime on YouTube, and it's gonna be in the links below. 
Check it out. Real good story. Take care, everybody. Make good choices. And see you next time.